Hi guys, it is Thursday the 23rd of April and it's Mrs Upton so hi I hope you're all okay it's the first time we're touching base this week so it's really good to be here with you guys and well done for keeping up with the learning. So we're going to take you through a reading activity about the monster and the frog and they go to sea then I'm going to direct you to your core skills we're going to have a look at tally charts with maths we're going to have a quick look at some grammar and then at English, we're going to be looking at planning and non-chronological report together. And then you've got your connected curriculum acti activities to choose from. So let's get started, hey? So I would like you, first of all, to have a read of your questions because you know how important it is that we know what we're looking for in the answer. So read your questions first. And then I'd like you to go to the piece to read about Monster and the Frog. So I want you to pause the video here. I want you to have a read of your questions, have a read of Monster and the Frog, then I want you to go back to your questions and have a look to see if you can find the answer. Now when you're looking for the answer, I want you to underline the words or the piece of information where you know you're going to be finding the answer, what has directed you to that part of the text. And then once you've got that answer, I want you to underline, read the whole sentence and then do your, and then fill your answer in. Okay, so you should have paused, read your questions, read the piece, gone back to your questions, underlined the information that's going to give you the answer, and then filled in. And you guys don't have the sheet, well most of you won't have the sheet in front of you, so this is easy to do in your book, and you're going to be able to write your answers in sentences which is going to be really helpful for you to be understanding what it is that you're writing so your answers in your book might look like this so you could put a number one in the margin that today's day a number one in the margin and say well, I'm not sure if you've got margins okay but a number one and then you can say as your answer frog said this must be our lucky day because tell me why it's frog thinks that it must be his lucky day in that sentence or your own it's just an example and then number two so write yourself a number two and then the stem sentence opener is monster was worried because because that's answering the question why was monster worried so have a read have a read of your questions and then think about what your stem sentences are to be able to answer those questions So let's read our questions because it's always good to have the questions in mind when we're reading the text. So why did frog say this must be our lucky day? So we're focusing on frog here and we've got four options. Monster liked boats. They were by the sea. A boat drifted towards them. It was a sunny day. OK, four options there for why did frog and frog is the focus and why was monster worried? OK, let's read the text then. So Monster was not very happy when a little boat came drifting towards them, but it cheered Frog up. This must be our lucky day, he said. Come on, Monster. I've never been on a boat, said Monster. The two friends climbed in and Frog pulled hard on the oars. So let's start with the first question and it's Frog. Why did Frog say this must be our lucky day? So we've got some information here at the beginning. What happens? What's happening at the start of this story? Tell me. Yeah, so the boat, a little boat came drifting towards them. Now, it's focusing on who to begin with. Who's the main focus to begin with? So which animal is it? Frog or monster? The very opening sentence. So was not very happy. Who is it? It's monster. So monster was not very happy. Is this question asking about monster? Let's read the question again. Why did frog say this must be our lucky day? We're not interested in monster, do we? Although it tells us what's happening here, it's that bit is about monster's reaction and he was not very happy. But frog says this must be our lucky day. Why? Why does frog say that? Let's look at our answers. Monster liked boats. Does that tell us why Frog thinks it's his lucky day? No, and I'm not sure that's true. They were they were by the sea. Is that why he thinks it must be their lucky day? Have we heard anything about them? That we know they're at sea, but does that answer our question? Okay, a boat drifted towards them. Does that happen in this part of the story? 
is frog happy when this happens in this part of the story? Okay, this is seeming like a good option. And then the last option is it was a sunny day. Okay, so I think we've we've kind of looked through those four options. We're going to take a look at the answer in a minute. Let's look at the second question. Why was Monster worried? Okay, so this time we're focusing on Monster. What's Monster's problem? So to begin with, if we read again, Monster was not very happy when a little boat came drifting towards them, but it cheered Frog up. This must be our lucky day, so Frog's excited about this little boat. What does Monster say next? Frog says, come on, Monster. What does, what does Monster say? He says the words, I've... Has he been on a boat before? What's that sentence? It says, I've never been on a boat before, said Monster. So why was Monster worried? So we've got the answers to our questions here. It was the boat drifting towards them that men that Frog said, this must be our lucky day. What do you think? What do you think Frog's thinking? A boat drifted towards them. What does he want to happen? He wants to get in, doesn't he? Of course. Um, our second question, why was Monster worried? And we've started with that stem sentence. Monster was worried because... Betty eats carrots and Uncle sucks eggs. Check that spelling of because year twos. Monster was worried because he'd never been in a boat before. So he's unsure about doing something that he's never tried and that's why he's worried. Right guys, that's our reading done for today. So well done, good job. How did you do? And if you didn't get them right, think about why and what it is and where you went wrong and have you got it now? And as long as you've got it now, that's good learning. Well done team. Core skills time. So you all know how to get on the TT Rockstars and we're seeing some good competitions going on. We're seeing this we're seeing people who are logging in and activating their login. We, me and Mrs. Mulner are both checking in and seeing who's doing a good job and who's getting faster and quick, quicker with their TT Rockstars. If you need moving on, you feel like you nail the times table that you're on, email us, let us know, and we can change your TT Rockstars. So log on, get TT Rockstaring, guys. Good luck. Maths time. Okay, so we're looking at pictograms in our LO. is to use a tally to collect information and then draw a pictogram. So I want you to have a little think for a moment. What is a pictogram? Okay, what is a pictogram? So can you have a chat with a grown up or have a chat with a cat or have a chat out loud to yourself if you sat at the computer doing it and if you are, well done you. What is a pictogram? Think about what you were doing with Mrs. Monday yesterday. What does it look like? You got it? Okay, let's see. Let's see if you remember right. So, you'll do it. Use the information to complete the pictogram about the number of books read in each class. Now, Mrs. Mulner's put a little key here to say, look carefully, what do you need to count in? So, this key here is telling us that one picture of a book doesn't mean a book at all. What does it mean? Have a look at the key. Have a look where the red writing is and underneath the word key is underlined. And it's not the kind of key that you put in a door to a lock. This key tells us what each book is worth. So if you look on the left hand side at your tally chart, you can see we've got the gates. We've got one, two, three, four sticks going down and then we've got a bridge going across the four to make the fifth. On the right hand side, there's pictures of books. But each book, and you can see it in the key, equals five books. So it's like a tally chart. It's just a different way of showing a tally chart. So what Mrs. Mulner and I would like you to do is to draw this pictogram. So in your books, hopefully you've got a ruler at home. If you haven't got a ruler, you might do what Mrs. Upton does with the pen and hold a pen on its side and then draw a line so you can get a nice straight line. I understand that if you don't have a ruler, that's going to be trickier than what it would in a classroom. So don't worry as much as we would if we were at school. So draw yourself this pictogram. Put your classes in the left hand side and then draw yourself the key and finish them off. So you can see on the left hand side in class one, there's how many gates are there? I want you to count how many gates there are. Do that now. 
how many gates. So in class one, you can see there's four sticks going down and then a gate, a line going across to make a gate. So that's one. Then there's another four sticks with a gate going across two, three, four, five. There's five gates, isn't there? So for class one, you can see that there's four lines with one going across and there's one, two, three, four, five of them. Now look across to the pictogram for class one and you can see at the moment there's only two books. So how many more books are you going to need to draw in there to show that there are 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 books that have been read in class one? At the moment, you've got two books, which is 5, 10. So you've got to make that up to 25. And then you've got to do the same in class two. So have a look how many gates are on class two. There's one, two, three, four, five, six gates in class two. Oh, at the moment, there's only four books, though. How many more books are you going to have to add to it? OK, so I want you guys to have a look at the tally chart, at the pictogram, and make your own pictogram to show how many books have been read in each class. So pause the video here and do that, guys. OK, have we done it? This is what it should look like now. You should have completed the tally chart to show that there are five books at the top in class one and there's six in class two. There's three in class three. There's one, two, three, four, five, six in class four. There's one, two, three, four in class five. And there are three in class six. How did you do? Did you get them? Can you have a look at yours now and check and double count? Pause it here. Check and double count and see if you can figure out, oh, I haven't got as many books as you, Mrs. Upton. That's fine. So where did you go wrong? That's how we learn with those mistakes, isn't it? So double check. Have a look. Have you got it spot on? Okay, team two, so we're going to a year two class and they sell cakes at a bake sale. And we can see the tally chart here, like the one that we've just practiced and that one was starting off for us. Now we need you to do it by yourself so you can see the tally chart. I want you to draw a pictogram, like the one that you can see underneath here. So we're going to have, oh, it's making me salivate. We're going to have chocolate cake, lemon cake, red velvet cake, mint cake, carrot cake. What's your fave? I think my fave would be chocolate cake. If you added some sprinkles of Oreo on the top, defo chocolate cake. More like a brownie, that's how I'm imagining it. What's your fave? Tell me, tell me now. Mmm. Yes. Okay. So we've got the different kind of cakes. So you're going to pop those down the left hand side of your column. Now you need to decide what your key is going to be. Now we had a look at jumping in fives on the last one when we we're doing the books that makes sense doesn't it because what is a tally grouped into it's grouped into groups of a tally chart has four sticks going down and then a fifth one going across the middle doesn't it into a gate so it's, it represents how many does it represent a tally it represents five every time so I would go for a key of five what do you think would be a sensible picture to do in a cake pictogram? What kind of picture? So in the book pictogram, we had a picture of a book. What would be a sensible idea for a cake pictogram? A picture of a cake. I would say so too. So let's draw pictures of cakes in our pictogram. And each picture of the cake to represent five. So use the tally at above draw your pictures of your cake and let's get a pictogram represented how many cakes the year two bake sale sells okay pause here while you do that guys and i'll see you on the other side in a minute or 15 probably <laughs> mm -hmm. how do your cakes look these look delish, don't they? Okay, does your tally chart, nope, does your pictogram look anything like this one? Okay, have you completed it? Have you made sure that the tally that's represented has been represented equally by your pictogram? So let's have a look. We've got one, two, three, four chocolate cakes. 
because there's 5, 10, 15, 20 chocolate cakes. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 vanilla, 7 lemon cakes, and that's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35 lemon cakes. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 red velvet cakes, so that's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 red velvet cakes. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 mint cakes, so that's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 mint cakes. And then we've got a whopping 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 carrot cakes, which is 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40 carrot cakes. How did you do? If you've missed any cakes or you've put any extra ones in there, don't just take your time to have a look at the tally chart and think, oh, yeah, look, chocolate cake, there's 20. So, of course, that should be four cakes. I put five. It doesn't matter. This is how we learn. So, have a look at the chart. If there's any that you've got incorrect, go back, be the detective, figure out where it is that you've missed that one or added one too many. Make sure you understand why and you're doing brilliant learning, guys. Have a check now. So, pause the video, have a check, make sure that yours looks like this. Let's have a look at this deeper net. Let's see what our understanding of pictograms really is. So, Teddy, Mrs. Pilkington's little boy, Teddy, maybe not, but we can pretend. Teddy writes these statements about her pictogram. You've got to get wrap your head around this. See it as a story, guys. Ready? There were more cows than sheep. Okay, so hold that in. There were more cows than there were sheep. There were the same number of sheep and horses. There were more chickens than any other animal. This is a lot. There were less cows than goats. There were exactly eight goats. Now, can you draw your own pictogram so that you can show us what Teddy's results are? might look like now you're not going to know the exact numbers apart from one you know one exact number have a look through that again what do you know is exact you know there were eight goats so here with your goats you know that there were eight goats have a look at the bottom on this blue strip at the bottom that Mrs Mullen has done for you. There are eight goats here. Now go back and have a look. There were more cows than sheep. So when you're drawing this, you've got to draw that there are more cows than there are sheep. There were the same number of sheep as there were horses. There were more chickens than any other animal got to be your biggest there are more chickens than any other animal and there were less cows than there were goats but you know that there were eight goats now think about where a good place is going to be to start here I would start with the one that you know has to be exact I would start with your what do we know has to be exact I would start with your goats so i'd start with the goats and build up your pictogram around it if i were you i'd just use circles or squares or just something a really easy because we're not interested in what the picture looks like here we're interested in whether you can figure out what the different number of these animals could look like using the information there is no exact right answer here, guys. So when I show you the next page, don't think, oh, I didn't get it right because mine's different. The only exact thing that we know is that there were eight goats. There could be a whole host of different avenues. Okay, so pause it here. Write your animals along the bottom and then draw circles or squares or triangles, something really quick and easy to show how many of what animals go where. Okay, I'll be back. So this is it. This is one of a possible of different answers. The only thing that we need to be exact on are the goats. We know that there are eight goats. Chickens have the most, so we've done a really just a big amount of chickens because we know that that's the most. There were the same number of sheep and horses, so however many you chose for your sheep, it has to be the same for the horses. We've chosen three. So there are three sheep and three horses because there's got to be the same amount. 
there were less cows than goats. Now, we know how many goats has got to be, so the cows have got to be less. How did you do? If you go, it, it won't, it probably won't look like this, but have you followed those instructions to get it so that those sentences are correct? Have one last double check and send email them to me. Okay, so email them to me and I can have a check and I can do some shout outs for this because this is a tricky one. Okay, pause here now then guys because that's the end of your math. And we're going into some grammar, 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 grammar time, grammar, 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 grammar time, grammar, 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 grammar time. Can you do past tense verbs right? Can you change these words into their past tense? So we're in the present at the moment, aren't we? Walk, jump, hop, skip. Can you write a sentence using each past tense verb as if it's already happened? So let's have a look. Your answers might look like this. So I've given you, so remember in your box, you're gonna be doing this. So you can put all under today, so you can do it all under today's date and write the heading grammar next. That's what I'd be doing. I'd be doing my reading, put the heading reading, then I'd be doing core skills are on the internet, so you don't need to worry about that. But then I would write maths and underline it and do my maths work, and I'd do grammar and I would underline it and do my grammar work. So here is your grammar. I have changed walk into walked. What do you notice? is the sound at the end of these past tense verbs. Okay, so the word jump, what is it when it's past tense? tense? Say it out loud. Say the word jump out loud in its past tense, adding that ed on the end. So it's jump. T. So you can hear that t sound. It's weird, isn't it? It's an ed, but it makes a t sound. It's one of those things that we've just got to remember. Now, let's do the same for hop, hopped. We like the t sound today, don't we? And say skip. And say the past tense was skip out loud. So, I want you to write a list of the present tense equals and the past tense. And then I want you to do me some sentences using those words. So I've given you an example here. So, I walked two into, that doesn't make sense, cross out the two. I walked into the bathroom to have a Splashy, splashy bath. Splishy, sploshy bath was what I was supposed to say. I, I, I'm not on point here, am I, guys? So you're going to have to do that sentence better than me. I walked, get rid of two, into the bathroom to have a splishy, splashy bath. And I've used as a noun phrase there on the end. And it's more exciting than using just bath. And then what verb am I going to be using next? The bunny something into his deep, dark burrow. What did he do? What's the verb for what that little bunny did? So I want you to fill that in for me or do your own sentence. That's just an idea. Get writing me those four sentences, please, guys, and send them over to me. I would like to see them, please. Pause the video here while you do it, guys. Okay, welcome back. Have we got some ED verbs? So my sentences looked like this. I walked into the bathroom to have a splishy, splashy bath. Splashy, splashy. Silly Mrs. Upton. The bunny hopped into his deep, dark burrow. I skipped down the warm, sandy beach so that I could dip my toes into the sea. Oh, these sentences are getting nicer, aren't they? Joe Wicks loves to be a kangaroo. He skipped so high that he lost his joey. Anybody else doing Joe Wicks in the morning? Yeah, we're liking it here at my house. So how do your sentence look? Have you got that all important ED at the end of your words? And have you doubled up on those consonants that need doubling up? Check your sentences. Let's make sure our spelling, we're spelling the words that we should be spelling in year two and get them over to me so I can have a look, please, guys. Thank you. That is the end of your grammar session. Let's have a look now at our English and we're going to be planning a non-chronological text. So you've got to have a think now. What do you want to tell us about? I want to know about you and your beach. What do you want to tell us about? What do you already know about the beach? 
put your hands up. Well, shout it out. Don't matter. Shout it out. Although if mums or dads are working at the moment and anybody's on nights, don't shout too loud. But what do you already know about the beach? Tell me. Tell me something. Tell me one thing that you already know about the beach. Okay. Yes. Okay, good. So have you been to a beach before? Because you could include your own best beats about the beach best bits about the beach or your top tips. Top tip that I learned was take talcum powder to the beach because if you rub it on your hands or your feet, it just makes the sand come clean off. Genius, genius move. Um, maybe you've got some good beach games that we could play together that you could tell us about. So what do you know about the beach? What top tips might you want to give me? Could you make up your own beach game that could feature in your text? text somewhere so maybe a little feature of what to do at the beach if you get bored something like that so I want you to have a good think about what it is that you're going to include in your beach non-cron report and I want you to think about three headings that you might use in your non-chronological report about the beach I want you to write them down and underneath each heading I want you to write a few keywords underneath so that when you come to do this tomorrow you can have a little look it's like a mini plan you have a little look and think okay these are the three areas I'm going to be writing about and under this area I'm going to make sure that I've got I've got these three things so I don't need to be thinking about my ideas that's tomorrow you can just be thinking about getting them on paper what your spelling's going to look like you can be making sure that you're the structure of your sentences are really good. This is the idea bit. How are we going to make it exciting and engaging for your audience to read so that when, because we can't go to the beach at the moment, can we? We can't be heading off to the beach. When I get these through on email and I'm looking at them, you are going to make me go, oh, I love the beach. And yeah, that's a really good idea, Louis. I could do that at the beach. Oh, that's an amazing idea, Sid. Yes, I'm going to do whatever you think will most engage me and want to get me excited about going to the beach okay check spellings guys we need to be spelling a lot of these key words bob on now don't we so let's make sure that we're checking our spellings you're using this planning session as an opportunity to do that so then tomorrow you've really just got to focus on your sentence structure and get in those capital letters full stops and interesting sentence structure nailed this is what it could look like. This is what my idea looked like. So I'm going to do three headings that I know I'm definitely going to um, use. So I'm going to do a heading that what is at the beach and I've got a question mark in there because I know that's something I should be using in year two. So what is at the beach and I've done a little list of salt water, sand, stone. I'm going to talk about the different kind of beaches that you can have. I've also got another heading. You know it's my heading because I've underlined it. Popular games. So I'm going to talk about the top, my top five beach games. I'm going to make sure I include rounders in there because I love playing rounders. I was always the bowler at school. And about burying dad's toes in the sand. So the word burying there is going to remind me about dad's toes in the sand. And then my last heading, things to do at the beach. So I've done a list of popular games, but also some other things that you can do at the beach. I should have put rock pooling in there, shouldn't I? Looking at this again. I put fun, grown-ups relaxing, and a little try this section as well. So they're my three areas that I know tomorrow when I come to write my non-chronological report at the beach, I'm going to have some things to go at. I'm not going to be sat with a plain piece of paper saying, oh, I don't know what to do. So give it a go. Get your book out. It doesn't have to be across the page. It can be one under the other, but it doesn't just need to be three things either. If you can think of some more headings that you want to use and there's some things about the beach because you've gone to a specific beach and you're like, this will be amazing. Then include that. Okay, so have a write down. Have a think about the what areas are you going to want to write about in a non-chronological beach report. Off you go, guys. Now the last thing, don't forget our connected curriculum menu choice. You can find this at the year two homepage on our school website and try and include a good variety of different subjects. Okay, we're looking forward to seeing what you come up with. Well that's Thursday's learning done so good job guys well done for keeping up the hard work it's such a strange thing to be doing isn't it so if you've got this far and you made it through the whole day you are a superstar and I'm going to be doing some shout outs so thanks guys keep safe see you tomorrow